Why, how do you do? This is me. Oh, I can't scrunch around anymore. My amps are way over there on the other side of the room. This thing's still feeding back. But I put the pickups in. I think I, this was a, this still is a great playing guitar. Sounds good. But I did something wrong in it. Insanely out of control. So I'm going to try playing with the amps over there, which doesn't give me that, you know. That's why guitar players like to be in front of their amps, or their amps, you know, the vibration, the vibration, the sound vibration coming out of the amplifier affecting the pickups and everything else. So you can do feedback, different feedback things, and you get a whole different sound. And if the amps are over on that side of the room, 20 feet away, facing that way, and then really, so I know that I screwed up. So I'm going to call my guitar guy and admit defeat after how many months? Like seven? But I told him, dude, I can do this. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to play anyways. <laughs>
And the lead guy, here he is, he's like, now, you know me, I just, I admit to shredding, I have a disease. But this guy's like, dude, you know, I played in bands in the er, in the 90s, I know what I'm doing, man, I've done my shredding. So now it's all about, you know, not just picking it out of my ass, but, you know, feeling, feeling with my ass. See, it's something they're off the wiring. So his lead is like... <laughs> because I haven't called my friend and I'm not saying any names so he comes back at me with his snooty little retort like dude you know I have played in a band before like dude I have played in bands since the early 80s even though I don't you know sneak my way into these documentaries or rockumentaries that they took from Spinal Tap basically and, you know, send a bunch of pictures and hopefully they get one in a shuffle. Because I saw my friend Tony in the end of one of them. The one hard rock, L.A. band. And this band, the picture that a guy put in, that band never played one show. They never even played a note because they couldn't. I know this because two of the band members told me. The two that tried to get me to join the band with this other guy, and I said, Well, you know, I don't like you and you, but you will take. And we started another band. Very convoluted. Point is, is this guy gets his picture at the end, right at the beginning of the end credits, and it's showing the guy next to him, not actually the guy that's in who thinks it's his band. And they're zooming in on the guy's face, who was my friend, and then they pan out, I guess, you know, out really quick, so you can't see anybody else. So he's like, oh, finally, I think, I don't know, because I don't go to anybody's page on Facebook but my own. Nobody's, just mine. I know it's a little, it's just, I don't care. This is my son, and I, like, if I want to talk to my son, I talk to my son, I call him, I don't go to Facebook, ever. I only go use Facebook for people that I can only get through to them through Facebook. Otherwise, I call them. That's what real people do still. And I got rid of my cell phone. I don't even have a smart... You know what smartphone I got? Four. That's when I stopped. Boop. I have a little Verizon that I buy time. I get 30, you know, unlimited for $15 for 30 days. Unlimited texting and blah blah blah, and that's it. And I did that a couple months ago. Actually, in December, or no, January, something like that. Whenever. Don't want to think too much. So, you know, I'd love to tell more band stories, but they're so, you know, crazy. Like, I'll have to tell, I'll have to retell the, uh, Sea Hag story because that is a classic. It's a classic story that involves me, uh, my bass player, CC DeVille, a bunch of people begging me not to take this girl home. I did not know what I was doing. I was out of my mind on stuff. I had been sick for two weeks with the flu. This was my first night out. I go out, we hit a blizzard on the way to the friggin club then i start downing this you know half pint of jack and so i had to go back home change shower back out again hit another snowstorm but everything's been you know there's nothing there to go out and uh, you know it's good 
too. And that happened. So then we get to the club, and I walk in, and I see this beautiful angel dancing. And I'm like, what the heck? She is hot. And my friend, who's gay, was gay, is, he's like, dude, no, I'll do you. I'm like, no, 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 look at that. Why isn't anybody talking to her? She's more gorgeous than I was probably like, I need more So I go up to her, start talking to her. She's like thrilled to have, you know, a guy that looked like me. She's looking at the pictures back then. I was amazing. So I'm talking to her and I'm like, you know, let's get out of here. And she's like, yeah. So everybody's like trying to stop me. Literally like 20 people, no, 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 don't, don't do it. This is that FM station. So you know, right then, probably shouldn't take anybody home. That was like the second or third or fourth or fifth. I don't know how many I've taken home from that. Anyways, usually, so like, no, let's come on. So I get through the mass of people, CC, who used to call me Warlock, because I sold him a Warlock, just before they, you know, hit big and all that crap, and drummer was hitting on my first wife, and I was threatening to kick his ass, and he's like, dude, I didn't know, blah, 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 and that even made me more angry, so, you know, Ricky Rock was scared to death of me, which is good. I had to also punch Jeannie Lane in the friggin' face, knock him clean out, because he was in love with my first wife. Bam! He pulls up in his brand new red Corvette that he bought with the after they got signed. And, oh, it pissed me off. Because I just got blown over. Uh, Capitol Records was after my band Trick or Treat, but then Mandy Lyon, the dickwad, screwed it all up, didn't show up for a demo thing we were doing, blew the whole thing, so I was madder than hell. And then to see this guy get signed and drive up in a new... That was it. And we were there at this party. And I didn't want anybody to see it. So he's walking in. No, everybody's out back partying. He walks in. He's like, hey, dude. Don't lie. And that's it. Wham! Hit it right in the face. He goes down. I feel bad now, you know. He's gone. But, dude, don't mess. So, boom, boom, boom. And then CC, nice guy, he was like a nice guy. So I sold him a white DC Rich Walk Warlock. You can see it in some pictures standing there next to my Marshalls. When I was playing, it would be my backup, which I never, ever, 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 ever used a backup. My star never failed me. Not this, my star guitar. So, anyways, I take this chick home. She looks hot, you know, doing everything, somersaults, spinning on our heads stuff shooting everywhere, all sorts of things going on. Finally pass out, get up the next day, little bit of lights coming in. Oh, by the way, we're in my parents' garage, which we also rehearse in. And, you know, I'm rolling over, I'm like, not bad, not bad. In the dark, with a little bit of light, and it was like one o'clock in the afternoon one or two, and I'm like, well, hey, get up. I didn't know her. Still don't know what her name is. The first thing that came to my head was Sea Hag. Like, so, but not yet. So she, I go, here, let, let, I'm going to get something to drink. And I open the door and I look back. I'm like, oh! Oh! I didn't just see what I saw. So I'm like, please get dressed. When I come back, we're leaving. She goes, can you get me? I go, yeah, yeah, I'll get something. So I get her like a juice box kids. This is like 1989, something like that, 90. So whatever the kids were drinking, I got her that, threw it at her, and she walked outside. I'm like, Mom, you know, how old are you? And she's like 46. And I'm like, 46? She goes, well, that's not old. How old are you? I go, 23. That's old. I mean, 46, 23. Turn it around, man, woman, it's not that big deal. Woman, man, big deal. And she looked like 66 on a good day, on a bad day. So, anyways, I'm like, oh my gosh. I didn't know that she snagged one of our flyers that had my number on it. So I take her, I'm driving her towards somewhere, Van Eyes, and she goes, stop here at the park. I go, oh, you live in those apartments? She goes, no, I live in that bush. I'm like, the bush? 
Yeah. I'm like, I, 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 I slept with a homeless woman? She goes, oh, I have a job. I work at Thirsty's, which is like the worst strip club in the valley. Was. I don't even know if it's still there. I'm like, you work at Thirsty's. Oh, my. Okay, get out. Get out. She goes, I'll call you. I'll go, no, please. I, I have a, a wife. I didn't at that point. So, I split. She starts calling immediately. Talks to everybody. I'm like, oh my gosh, so whatever. I go out to the garage to clean it up before rehearsal. Now, this is a warning. It's gonna get graphic. So all kids and women, stop right now. I'll give you 10 seconds, really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You should have turned off the camera or whatever. Or not the camera, I should turn it off. So I walk in, I see this big, splat of blood on my Coors Light poster that's got this, you know, beautiful girl laying down with a Coors Light and, you know, I used to, you know, ask for posters at liquor stores all the time they gave them. It went well in the rehearsal studio, so I'm like, what the? What happened? So I see the blood, I look down, at the end there's a yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, she pulled out and threw it again, and I, I didn't see it because I was whacked out of my head, it was dark, and I'm not going to say what, I, it was horrifying to realize that that happened. So of course I call my friend, Tony, and he's thinking this is the greatest thing he's ever heard in his life. He can't stop laughing, he calls everybody, everybody's trying to get hold of me for like, this goes on for months. I'm like, ugh. They're like, dude, tell us about the Sea Hag story. So you got the, you know, kind of short version. It actually is a, like a 45-minute thing. I did a stand-up routine just telling it. People, they're like, dude, you went over the top. No one will believe that. That, that would never happen. I go, dude, it's absolutely the truth. In fact, I left some stuff out. This is down at the Flappers. Dominic Club in Burbank. So, there you go. There's a little story for you. Not much band, but it's during the time. Yeah, <laughs> let me get the, you know, I had to take that poster down because there's no way to clean it. So, so that just, do not drink and don't do drugs. Not that I ever did, but, it, you know, something happened. <laughs>